Hello and welcome or welcome back to today's movement class. One of the immediate benefits will be your ability to sit on your heels like I am now and oh, feel more comfortable sitting on your heels and even if you sit like this for a few minutes you will be able to get up and walk <laughs> if you know what I mean. Let's start. I invite you to participate. We will be on all fours on the knees and the hands. If you have a ottoman or a footrest of a couch, for the beginning you might lean, you might even relax over. That's the starting position. And the first movement is going to be with your right leg, uh, with your right lower leg, with your right foot actually, to move your right foot to the to move your right foot out laterally, out to the side and keep your right knee in place. So you pivot, the pivot point is on your right knee. So do you find, find this movement? Try to relax into this movement of sliding your right foot out a bit and then in a bit and find a good way you can realign yourself a good stance for your upper leg the upper leg need to be like a pole like a pillar supporting your pelvis in the air and your right foot slides out your right lower leg like a window wiper out to the side A couple of times until you start to get a feeling for this movement until you might start to feel that your thigh is rotating inwards so that's the mechanics of it your upper leg is rotating inwards in order for your right foot to go outwards And you can compare the movement with your left leg. So try the same thing with your left foot. So don't move your right foot anymore, just move your left foot. So start to move your left foot to the outside and back in again and see what do we see? What do you want to feel? Maybe there's too much to feel, maybe there's too little to feel. So feel how far out can your left foot wander, <laughs> slide, and how far out can your right foot slide, and which one can slide more smoothly. And as you start to think of it, what is your, if you think of the right foot, if your right foot is sliding out, what is your right foot doing? Like, is it your heel that slides out first, or your toes that slides out first? Is your right foot rather limp? <laughs> being dragged by your right ankle. What do you do with your right foot when you move your right foot outwards and, and how is it on the left side? Then we take a short break, just a short break to relax the arms. And then come onto all fours again on your hands and knees or if you chose to start this lesson with your upper body resting on somewhere just make sure your spine is more or less parallel to the ground 
and let's start again with the same movement the right foot to the outside to the right but this time press your dorsum the upper part of your foot the part where the shoelaces would be press that part onto the floor and if you are wearing shoes please take your shoes off so <laughs> your, your foot needs to be flexible in this lesson so press lengthen your foot press your shin to the floor press the toes the toenails to the floor and then slide out your right foot and see how is this movement the same movement like before when you press your <laughs> foot against the floor if if you if your foot is start to cramp uh, yes <laughs> relax your foot bend it a little bit and then try again so respect what is happening and but we have a clear intention of pressing the foot against the floor and sliding it out and then sliding it in again so how is this movement so this position this as opposed to keeping your foot very limp or a third position for your foot to stand your toes like you stand your like a sprinter would start running so you have your the balls of your feet on the floor the toes on the floor the ankle bend strongly lots of tension on the sole of your foot and then slide your foot out to the side to the right and back again always only one foot at a time please so you can really focus on the movement of this one foot how is it how is it different when your toes are standing or when your toes are flattened to the floor or when your foot is just relaxed how does this change the movement for your leg for your pelvis for your jaw for your breathing and then you can do the same thing with your left foot Let's try the, the same thing with your left foot or you can compare with your right one but only one foot at a time it's quite interesting huh? it's very different when you press your shin for me I like the feeling of pressing my shin to make the foot very long I like it I like to feel the floor on the front side of my ankle it's an unusual feeling and it's like it's almost like a back rub like a bear rub on the back like a bear rubs its back against the tree we rub <laughs> the foot against the floor I, I so I think it feels nice or I feel it feels nice I like that feeling whereas when I have my toes standing I have it's like it's almost it almost feels like a knife going through a glass of Nutella do you have the same feeling <laughs> Okay, and then we take a short, a short break from this first movement. Bringing our attention to our feet and the legs, the feet sliding outwards one foot at a time.
and then we need to continue. <laughs> Very short breaks <laughs> again. So this time you need to be on your hands or at least on your elbows, but we need the freedom. And you might compare for yourself. If you rest your upper body or you are resting on your elbows, you are more limited with the movements of your upper body than when your hands are standing and your arms are long. Then your upper body is really free and can move and your pelvis is free and your hip is flexed. And okay, and from this position we will start again by sliding the right foot out to the side. But now we will do something. So do this a couple of times. Slide your right foot out to the side, but with the upper body, with the upper body we will evade any movement to the left. So you will shift your head and your shoulders to the left while you slide your right foot to the right. And the way we can do this, for example, is to walk the hands to the left while the right foot slides out to the right. And when the right foot returns, you walk back. Yeah, do you, do you get my intention, my instruction of this movement? Your knees stay where they are, the right foot slides to the outside, and at the same time you move your shoulder, you move your upper body to the left. And if you <laughs> start to have the hang of it, if you start to feel it, you actually don't need to walk your hands anymore, you just shift a little bit. You lean to the left while you slide your foot to the right. And this is almost like a seesaw movement. You might start to feel that in, in your torso. And, and to improve the awareness for this feeling, let's continue this for a couple of times more without me talking. And then stop doing the thing with the upper body, just continue to slide your right foot to the outside. And, and can you feel the bend, the bending of your spine? So let's do this. Slide your right foot to the outside and look with your head to your right foot. So it's a side bending to the right. Your right foot slides out to the side. And of course your knee stays where it is and your, the right side of your torso becomes shorter and the left side becomes longer or you could walk a little bit with your hands towards your right knee. So it's really a side bend. You look with your head like a horse <laughs> to the side to your foot and then come back again. And then start to become good in, with this movement. Right foot out to the side and a side bend to the right. Or don't do this. And instead evade the movement. Now do you feel that evading when you slide your right foot to the right, you hold torso, like a stick, turns a little bit to the left, or you go into the side bending. Two very distinct movements of the torso in reaction to the foot, the right foot moving. And of course we can try this with the uh, foot flat on the floor or with the toes standing, so that might make a, make a difference and you can readjust how you hold your hands, where you position yourself. 
to do this strange movement for the first time and then the second time and then slowly become better and better at it and start to develop a feeling for this side bending, how the movement of the upper leg relates to your pelvis side bending, tilting and to your torso reacting up to your neck or by completely evading the side bending by <laughs> just swivel to the left. Yes, the first, when you do this the first time, it might feel a little bit strange, but then it ah, starts to make sense, perfect sense. Either side bending to the right or a swivel to the left. Then we take a short break and continue to experiment with this movement on the other side to slide the left foot out to the left a couple of times. and then the shoulders to the right while the left foot slides out to the left. So we evade the side bending. The whole spine moves like a stick, <laughs> like a kitchen table is turned or the other way around when you move your left foot to the left you Turn your head to look to the left, you side bend to the left. And you work on this movement, you try, you experiment and slowly you start to have a feeling for it, an understanding of it, and you start to get better and better. But of course, the wrists, this is a problem, yes. So next movement, lean on your elbows. Come to lean on your elbows not on the footrest but on the floor with your elbows on the floor and your knees on the floor so it's a tighter situation the spine is kind of butt rested a little bit by, by doing so looking forward into the ground <laughs> and then move your right foot or swivel your right foot to the right and see, wow, when you're down, when you're down like this, on your elbows, the spine don't move that much, can move a little bit, but not that much. Or you might even go a little bit lower to prevent the spine from moving even more. And then slide out your right foot to the right and your left foot out to the left, or both at the same time. Yes, and then you can feel how the legs work on your spine. So in this situation you can feel when you slide your right foot out to the right, your spine is, tends to go into a side bend, but it can't. <laughs> and when you swivel your left leg, when you move your left foot out to the left, also spine wants to move, can't, and when you move both feet Mm, we have a space allocation problem and see, can you work on the quality of moving the feet gently, mm, respectfully, how much can they slide, how much can your lower legs act like window wipers and your thighs turn inwards, inwards rotation of the thighs. And what's the best position for your knees? How far should the knees be away from your elbows? What do you feel makes sense? Feels where, where do you have the, less, the least effort? So that's one way to think of it in this situation. 
what feels more comfortable, more efficient. And not only that, what feels interesting and where what feels what actually feels good. What what how can you make yourself in such a situation comfortable <laughs> if if at all? But maybe you can start to enjoy this movement of your legs to play with your feet on the floor. To observe. Is it your heels that move out first or your toes? How do you even move your legs? How do you know your legs are moving when you're not looking at them? And then, as we are already almost on the floor, we take a rest. Uh, a rest on the floor, on the back, for example. And then we continue. So please come up again onto your knees and hands. Again, we need to be freestanding. This time keep your knees together. Your knees, knee, knees and knees. Our relatives. Okay, the knees together and the feet together. And this time move both feet to the right. Yes? Ah, okay. So that's different, isn't it? So when you move both feet to the right, the, the pelvis needs to tilt. The upper body, does, it, does the upper body need to side bend? How is it when you move both feet at the same time and you keep your legs together? Oh, you can really experience the side bending in this situation. Oh, side bending, like skiing with your feet flat on the floor or with your feet standing. How is this different? To the right, so do a couple of times to the right or a couple of times to the left, slowly, slowly, to compare the sides. And here you can feel on which side you're better in side bending. And if one side doesn't work so well, you might want to change your hand position or your technique and see how can you work yourself more into side bending and you can really feel one side becoming very short right side of the body short left side very long around the curve one side and the other <laughs> it's winter time winter sports or we evade the side bending so when you swivel your Legs to the right, you move the upper body and head to the left. Haha! <laughs> no side bending at all. Or to the other side. <laughs> you escape your feet, you run away from your feet with your <laughs> knees as pivot point, or you allow yourself to go into the side bending. And thus, we, the side bending becomes better and better, proportionally distributed through your whole torso, your whole spine. The, the rib cage starts to mend, to align, to organize itself, to respond to the action of the feet and the legs. Yes, or we do the dog, the dog hello. 
with the legs very fast. So when you see a healthy young dog uh, wiggle its tail, you will see the whole spine is moving, the whole body is moving. So <laughs> we can do this very fast. The wiggle the tail <laughs> with our feet is tail, of course, the foot left and right and left and right. <laughs> Okay, then short. <laughs> Do you have a good, a good time moving? A good dog time? <laughs> what kind of dog would you be? <laughs> short rest. All right, so how are your wrists? We come to our last variation in this lesson. In this part of the lesson, we need to be on the knees again, but you can rest on a footrest or your Ottoman, <laughs> or the nice name, Ottoman. And the last movement in this lesson will be uh, Okay, so the feet are flat on the floor, so that's our starting position. The feet are extended on the floor, then you lift your heels toward your buttocks, up, 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 as far as you can, and you bend your foot, your toes towards your knees, and then you stand your feet on the floor with the toes standing and then you lift your heels to your buttocks and then you bring down your feet flat on the floor with the dorsum with the instep on the floor so you change the posture of your feet from the feet with ankle extended feet flat on the floor to toes standing flat and standing toenails on the floor and toes standing and not just change this position, but always try to lift your heels as far as possible towards your buttocks and then bring the feet down to the floor again, up and down. And you can do variations with your knees together or with your knees apart, or you can bring your feet apart from each other or the feet close together, but the main movement is to stand your toes and flatten your toes. So you bend your ankle and you extend your ankle. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. So the trick is to change this often and strongly. to further prepare ourselves to sit on the heels. If this is the purpose, if we make the, the, this lesson, the, the purpose of this lesson. Yes, but it's always good to move the feet. Huh? <laughs> How long should we do this? Okay, and by now you, you should feel that this movement became a lot easier and you have a better feeling for this movement of sliding the foot out of the internal rotation. Maybe the side of your leg has loosened up quite a bit. And now we can test how it is. <laughs> Just to sit back up. Yes, and how is it? How do you... How do you sit on your heels? How is it for your knees? Huh? Maybe if you had a gap, maybe this relaxed quite a bit. Maybe your legs are more mobile. So that's part of the trick. 
that your legs are more mobile, can move easier, can turn easier, that you have more possibilities and through that the whole business of sitting on your heels becomes better. Yes, I think that was fun, wasn't it? All right, so uh, we need, still need to get up, see if we still can stand, <laughs> or at least how is it in standing, how is standing and walking and running, how easy it is, how easy is it to come up to stand. To be upright. All right, so thank you so much for watching, for participating and for your support, for making these videos possible, for making these lessons possible. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.